1939, Marion Petty met Joseph Chang, a Chinese agent operating under journalistic cover, and remained in close contact with him throughout World War II. Around this time, Petty also made connections with the OSS through George Varga, Earl D. Brody, and Nick von Neumann, John von Neumann's brother, all low-level OSS officers. Sometime near the end of the war, Chiang introduced Petty to Charles E. Marsh at the National Press Club. Marsh, who ran the best private intelligence network of his era and was an intimate of FDR, Henry Wallace, and later Lyndon Johnson, became Petty's mentor and role model, shaping his career. Marsh's mentor and role model had been Colonel Edward M. House, who was a personal advisor to President Wilson circa 1919, and often mentioned in connection to the Council on Foreign Relations. Marsh died in December 1964. His last known address was in Austin, Texas. In the 1950s and 60s, Marsh provided funds for Petty to purchase hundreds of acres of farmland in Madison and Rappahannock counties near his estate in Culpeper County. Later, Petty arranged for William Yandel Elliott of Harvard University to purchase a property adjacent to him in Madison County. Elliott was a government professor at Harvard University who was on the National Security Council's planning board and a trustee of Radio Liberty, sponsored by the CIA. As of 1984, Elliott was a board member of Accuracy in Media and had written numerous books. In 1946, Marsh arranged for Petty, then acting as chauffeur to General Ira Eaker, to be trained in counterintelligence in Baltimore, Maryland. Around this time, Petty established close ties to two guards of atom bomb secrets, Captain Michael Altier and Major Harry Wolanin. In 1954, Petty recruited Eric Heiberg, who lost his NSA clearance at about this time. Heiberg was redeployed as a private investigator and subsequently as a talent spotter at Georgetown University. Petty received intelligence training at Georgetown University in 1956 and was sent to U.S. Air Force Intelligence Training School in Frankfurt, Germany in 1956 and 57. Through Marsh, Petty got his wife a job with the CIA from 1957 to early 1961, working in Washington as a secretary and in Germany for the chief of station, Frankfurt. Colonel Leonard Weigner, USAF trained Petty and advised him to retire from active military service and surround himself with kooks, recruiting agents from youth hostels and universities. Major George Varga became Petty's case officer, relaying Weigner's instructions until Varga died in the 1970s. Under Varga's instructions, Petty recruited a network of agents in Europe, including Dr. Keith Arnold in Paris in 1958, who he accompanied to Moscow in 1959 or 1960. Arnold, currently based in Hong Kong with the Roche Foundation, has made over 40 trips to mainland China and has stayed in contact with Petty. In the 1960s, Petty established connection with the Beat Movement. Norman Mailer and Dick Dabney frequented his Virginia farm. Dabney's widow, Dana, has extensive files on Petty. Peter Gillingham, 
Intermediate Technology, Palo Alto, California, and Christopher Son of Goldman Sachs, New York, met Petty in Moscow in 1961. In the early 60s, Petty allowed Ralph Borsodoy and Mildred Loomis to use his Virginia property for the School of Living, a decentralist, one-world government front organization. Around 1964, Petty recruited Bosco Nedeljkovic and deployed him to penetrate the Institute for Policy Studies. He was later an interpreter at the War College in Washington. In 1967 or 1968, Petty established a futurist network, assisting Edward S. Cornish in founding the World Future Society and working through Roy Mason and John Naisbitt. At this time, Petty also penetrated the hippie drug culture through retired naval intelligence officers Walt Schneider, Timothy Leary and Billy Hitchcock's private pilot, and Willard Polson, cut out between Petty activities, and those of Leary at Millbrook. In 1971, Petty infiltrated the Human Potential Movement, setting up Ken Kesey, Living Love, as a prominent guru and working through Dr. Stephen Belts, related to Judith Belts, a behavior modification specialist later deployed to the Institute of Cultural Affairs, and the Meta Network cult. Christopher Byrd, former CIA officer who served in Japan, psych warfare specialist in the Army, and author of New Age and Occult books, has also been associated with Petty. Byrd wrote The Secret Life of Plants with Peter Tompkins, New York, Avon, 1974. Tompkins wrote on New Age subjects like the pyramids and once served in the OSS. Petty's activities took a different turn in 1979 when he recruited John J. Cox, founder of General Scientific, a computer firm specializing in classified defense contracts. Cox trained several of Petty's finders in computer programming and communications technologies and took two or more of them to Costa Rica and Panama in 1980 and 81. Cox worked through Miguel Barzuna, a prominent Costa Rican money launderer, the Vienna, Virginia-based Institute for International Development, and Cuban exile Emilio Rivera in Costa Rica and Panama. Through Cox, Petty and the Finders linked up with several Washington-area computer-oriented groups, including Community Computers, a front organization for the community, a cult run by Michael Rios, a.k.a. Michael Versace. Petty's son David was a member of the community, and Petty's other son George was in Air America. Cox also recruited Theodore G. Rice, Preston-based computer programmer and highly active member of Werner Erhard's seminars. Cox also recruited Susan Gabriel and Judith Belts as couriers. Petty and Cox have simulated a falling out and pretend to be enemies. Finders headquarters is in Culpeper, Virginia, an hour and a half northwest of Washington, D.C., via State Route 666. Quote, The police had received an anonymous telephone call relative to two well-dressed white men wearing suits and ties in Myers Park, Tallahassee, apparently watching six dirty and unkempt children in the playground area. A Mr. Houlihan and Ammerman were near a 1980 blue Dodge van bearing the Virginia license number XHW-557, the inside of which was later described as foul-smelling, filled with maps, books, 
letters with a mattress situated to the rear of the van which appeared as if it were used as a bed. The overall appearance of the van gave the impression that all eight persons were living in it. The children were covered with insect bites, were very dirty, and most of the children were not wearing underwear, and all the children had not been bathed in many days. End quote. The United States Customs Service Special Agent Raymond J. Martinez appeared at the Washington, D.C. Metropolitan Police Department on April 2, 1987, for a briefing. Mr. Martinez states in his report of investigation, quote, I was advised that all the passport data found in the van in Tallahassee, Florida, had been turned over to the State Department for their investigation. The State Department, in turn, advised the MPD, Washington, D.C. Metropolitan Police Department, that all travel and use of the passports by the holders of the passports was within the law and no action would be taken. This included travel to Moscow, North Korea, and North Vietnam from the 1950s to mid-1970s. End quote. However, it should be noted that normal travel to those countries was illegal at that time. The final page of the U.S. Customs Service Report of Investigation states the following, quote, The individual further advised me of circumstances which indicated that the investigation into the activity of the finders had become a CIA internal matter. The MPD report has been classified secret and was not available for review. I was advised that the FBI had withdrawn from the investigation several weeks prior and that the FBI Foreign Counterintelligence Division had directed MPD not to advise the FBI Washington Field Investigation Office of the FBI of anything that had transpired. Ted Gunderson had this to say, quote, The Finders a CIA front established in the 1960s. It has top clearance and protection in its assigned task of kidnapping and torture programming young children throughout the U.S. Members are specially trained government kidnappers known to be sexual degenerates who involve the kidnapped children in satanic sex orgies and bloody rituals as well as the murders of other children and slaughter of animals. They use a fleet of unmarked vans to grab targeted children from parks and schoolyards. In doing so, they use children within their organization as decoys to attract the victims close to the vans where they are grabbed by adults. They then drug the children and transport them to a series of safe houses for safekeeping. They are then used in their ceremonies for body parts, sex slaves, and some are auctioned off at various locations in the Northern Hemisphere. In the past, they have been auctioned off near a location in Nevada and Toronto, Canada. Marion David Petty, the leader of the cult, is an identified homosexual pedophile and a CIA officer. His son was an employee of a CIA proprietary firm, Air America, which was notorious for smuggling drugs destined for the U.S. out of the Golden Triangle into Saigon during the Vietnam War. End quote. In regards to the currently still ongoing legal situation of Ghislaine Noel Marion Maxwell. I cannot speak about her trial now, as it remains upcoming at the time I am writing this. Therefore, much of the information available freely through mainstream media remains, while admissible into evidence in the court of law during her trial, insubstantial at the time of this writing, 
as regards making a final determination of her guilt or innocence in the crimes for which she stands accused. Therefore, as the subject of this lecture is to be Jeffrey Epstein, it is difficult, though not impossible, to omit mentioning Miss Maxwell in this regard. However, as either could be construed as poisoning the well and public jury tampering in the so-called court of public opinion, it remains incumbent on me as an independent author, subject to U.S. jurisprudence, to make such an attempt. I will therefore try to speak as exclusively as possible on known facts regarding Jeffrey Epstein as of this writing's date and time, and, for now at least, marginalize, minimize, and neglect the role Miss Maxwell may have played in these events. Pending her ongoing criminal investigation and court trial, prior to her conviction or acquittal in these regards, in short, I am compelled to treat any and all information mentioned herein regarding Miss Maxwell as delicately as I possibly can, due to the potential for personal legal ramifications on me if I do not. That being said, let us proceed. Wikipedia describes Jeffrey Edward Epstein, 1953 until 2019, as an American financier first, and as a convicted sex offender second. Citing for their first claim, journalist Paul Lewis's article, dated January 4, 2015, Jeffrey Epstein, The Rise and Fall of Teacher Turned Tycoon, in the British Daily, The Guardian. And for their latter claim, a press release, Jeffrey Epstein charged in Manhattan Federal Court with sex trafficking of minors by the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York, dated July 8, 2019. Wikipedia then goes on, quote, He began his professional life as a teacher, but then switched to the banking and finance sector in various roles, working at Bear Stearns before forming his own firm. He developed an elite social circle and procured many women and children who were then sexually abused by Epstein and some of his contacts, end quote. The article continues, describing Epstein's criminal history, quote, In 2005, police in Palm Beach, Florida, began investigating Epstein after a parent complained that he had sexually abused her 14-year-old daughter. Epstein pleaded guilty and was convicted in 2008 by a Florida state court of procuring a child for prostitution and of soliciting a prostitute. He served almost 13 months in custody, but with extensive work release. He was convicted of only these two crimes as part of a controversial plea deal. Federal officials had identified 36 girls, some as young as 14 years old, whom Epstein had allegedly sexually abused. Epstein was arrested again on July 6, 2019, on federal charges for the sex trafficking of minors in Florida and New York. He died in his jail cell on August 10, 2019. The medical examiner ruled the death a suicide. Epstein's lawyers have disputed the ruling, and there has been significant public skepticism about the true cause of his death. Since his death precluded the possibility of pursuing criminal charges, a judge dismissed all criminal charges on August 29, 2019. End quote. Although Wikipedia bothers to mention that there has been significant public skepticism about the true cause of his death, it also states explicitly that 
His death precluded the possibility of pursuing criminal charges, and that because a judge dismissed all criminal charges on August 29, 2019. It, therefore, explicitly does not state that Epstein was guilty of the federal charge of sex trafficking of minors in Florida and New York. So this is how history is supposed to remember the man exonerated of these crimes by means of supposed suicide. Born in 1953 to working-class Jewish parents in Brooklyn, New York City, Jeffrey Epstein's early childhood life was seemingly relatively uneventful. He exhibited aptitude for playing the piano from the age of five and managed to skip two grades in high school, but after attending two universities, one of these being the Koran Institute of Mathematical Sciences, which was considered among the most prestigious mathematics schools and mathematical sciences research centers in the world in 2019. Epstein ultimately left his higher education without receiving a degree in June 1974 at age 21. In September 1974, Epstein began to teach at the exclusive private Dalton School for Teens on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. Despite his lack of credentials, Epstein began teaching physics and mathematics and allegedly showed inappropriate behavior towards underage students at this time by, quote, influencing another Dalton parent into advocating for him at a parent-teacher conference, end quote, According to Lynn Copel, Greenberg's daughter, Epstein ingratiated himself to Alan Greenberg, then the chief executive officer of Bear Stearns, a New York-based global investment bank, securities trading, and brokerage firm that ultimately failed in 2008 as part of the global financial crisis and recession and was subsequently sold to J.P. Morgan Chase. When Epstein was dismissed from Dalton after two years of poor performance, Greenberg offered Epstein a job as a low-level junior assistant to a floor trader at Bear Stearns in June 1976. According to Wikipedia, Epstein, quote, swiftly moved up to become an options trader, working in the special products division, and then advised the bank's wealthiest clients, such as Seagram president Edgar Bronfman, on tax mitigation strategies. In 1980, four years after joining Bear Stearns, Epstein became a limited partner. In 1981, he was asked to leave Bear Stearns for, according to his sworn testimony, being guilty of a Regulation D violation. Regulation D contains the rules providing exemptions from the securities registration requirements, allowing some companies to offer and sell their securities without having to register the securities with the U.S. SEC. Securities and Exchange Commission. Wikipedia continues, quote, In August 1981, Epstein founded his own consulting firm, Intercontinental Assets Group Incorporated, IAG, which assisted clients in recovering stolen money from fraudulent brokers and lawyers. Epstein described his work at this time as being a high-level bounty hunter. He told friends that he worked sometimes as a consultant for governments and the very wealthy to recover embezzled funds, while at other times he worked for clients who had embezzled funds. Epstein also stated to some people at the time that he was an intelligence agent and, during the 1980s, 
Epstein possessed an Austrian passport that had his photo but a false name. The passport showed his place of residence in Saudi Arabia. During this period, one of Epstein's clients was the Saudi Arabian defense contractor Adnan Khashoggi, who was the middleman in transferring American weapons from Israel to Iran as part of the Iran-Contra affair in the 1980s. In 1987, Epstein went to work as a corporate raider for Towers Financial Corporation. In business, a corporate raid is the process of buying a large stake in a corporation and then using shareholder voting rights to require the company to undertake novel measures designed to increase the share value, generally in opposition to the desires and practices of the corporation's current management. These measures might include replacing top executives, downsizing operations, or liquidating the company entirely. In 1987 and 88, Epstein was involved with unsuccessful bids to take over Pan American World Airways and Emory Air Freight Corp. And during this time, he worked as a close consultant to TFC's chief executive officer, president, and chairman, Stephen Jude Hoffenberg. Towers Financial collapsed in 1993, and in 1995, Hoffenberg pleaded guilty to bilking investors out of $475 million. He was sentenced to 20 years in prison, 18 of which he served, plus a $1 million fine and $463 million in additional restitution. At the time, the SEC considered his financial crimes to be, quote, one of the largest Ponzi schemes in history, end quote. In court documents, Hoffenberg claimed that, quote, Epstein was intimately involved in the scheme. Epstein left the company by 1989, before it collapsed, and was never charged for being involved with the massive investor fraud committed. End quote. According to Wikipedia, quote, it is unknown if Epstein acquired any stolen funds from the Towers Ponzi scheme. In 1988, while Epstein was still consulting for Hoffenberg, he founded his own financial management firm, J. Epstein and Company. The only publicly known billionaire client of Epstein was Leslie Wexner, chairman and CEO of L Brands, formerly The Limited Incorporated, and Victoria's Secret. In July 1991, Wexner granted Epstein full power of attorney over his affairs. The power of attorney allowed Epstein to hire people, sign checks, buy and sell properties, borrow money, and do anything else of a legally binding nature on Wexner's behalf. Epstein made millions in fees by managing Wexner's financial affairs. In 1996, Epstein changed the name of his firm to the Financial Trust Company and, for tax advantages, based it on the island of St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands. By relocating to the U.S. Virgin Islands, Epstein was able to reduce federal income taxes by 90%. The U.S. Virgin Islands acted as an offshore tax haven while at the same time offering the advantages of being part of the United States banking system. End quote. From 2000 until 2007, Epstein was the president of the company Liquid Funding Limited. Again, according to Wikipedia, quote, the company was an early pioneer in expanding the kind of debt that could be accepted on repurchase, or the repo market, which involves a lender giving money to a borrower 
in exchange for securities that the borrower then agrees to buy back at an agreed upon later time and price. The innovation of liquid funding and other early companies was that instead of having stocks and bonds as the underlying securities, it had commercial mortgages and investment grade residential mortgages bundled into complex securities as the underlying security. Liquid funding was initially 40% owned by Bear Stearns. Through the help of the credit rating agencies, Standard & Poor's, Fitch Ratings, and Moody's Investors Service, the new bundled securities were able to be created for companies so that they got a gold-plated AAA rating. The implosion of such complex securities, because of their inaccurate ratings, led to the collapse of Bear Stearns in March 2008 and set in motion the financial crisis of 2007 and 2008 and the subsequent Great Recession. In August 2006, Epstein invested $57 million in the Bear Stearns high-grade structured credit strategies enhanced leverage hedge fund. This fund was highly leveraged in mortgage-backed collateralized debt obligations, CDOs. On April 18, 2007, an investor in the fund, who had $57 million invested, discussed redeeming his investment. At this time, the fund had a leverage ratio of 17 to 1, which meant for every dollar invested, there were $17 of borrowed funds. Therefore, the redemption of this investment would have been equivalent to removing $1 billion from the thinly traded CDO market. The selling of CDO assets to meet the redemptions that month began a repricing process and general freeze in the CDO market. The repricing of the CDO assets caused the collapse of the fund three months later in July and the eventual collapse of Bear Stearns in March 2008. End quote. According to an article in The Daily Beast from July 24, 2019, Epstein, quote, visited at the White House while Bill Clinton was president on at least four occasions, end quote. Clinton himself lauded Epstein as, quote, a committed philanthropist with insights and generosity, end quote. At that time, Epstein was on the board of Rockefeller University, a member of the Trilateral Commission, and the Council on Foreign Relations, and was a major donor to Harvard University. Epstein was a longtime acquaintance of Prince Andrew and attended parties with many prominent people, including Bill Clinton, George Stephanopoulos, Donald Trump, Katie Couric, Woody Allen, Harvey Weinstein, Steven Pinker, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, Steve Bannon, and Lawrence Krauss. His contacts included Rupert Murdoch, Michael Bloomberg, Richard Branson, Michael Jackson, Alec Baldwin, the Kennedys, Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Barak, British Prime Minister Tony Blair, and Saudi Arabian Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. He also worked with Bill Gates. It was reported in 2019 that Epstein had planned to seed the human race with his DNA by impregnating up to 20 women at a time using his New Mexico compound as a baby ranch where mothers would give birth to his offspring. Epstein installed concealed cameras in numerous places on his properties to allegedly record sexual activity with underage girls by prominent people for criminal purposes, 
such as blackmail. According to Wikipedia, he allegedly lent girls to powerful people to ingratiate himself with them and also to gain possible blackmail information. According to the Department of Justice, he kept compact discs locked in his safe in his New York mansion with handwritten labels that included the description Young Name Plus Name. Epstein implied that he had blackmail material when he told a New York Times reporter in 2018 off the record that he had dirt on powerful people including information about their sexual proclivities and recreational drug use." End quote. According to Wikipedia, quote, In March 2005, a woman contacted Florida's Palm Beach Police Department and alleged that her 14-year-old stepdaughter had been taken to Epstein's mansion by an older girl. There, she was allegedly paid $300 to strip and massage Epstein. A former employee told the police that Epstein would receive massages three times a day. Eventually, the FBI compiled reports on 34 confirmed minors eligible for restitution, increased to 40 in the NPA whose allegations of sexual abuse by Epstein included corroborating details. Julie Brown's 2018 exposés in the Miami Herald identified about 80 victims and located about 60 of them. Details from the investigation included allegations that 12-year-old triplets were flown in from France for Epstein's birthday and flown back the following day after being sexually abused by the financier. It was alleged that young girls were recruited from Brazil and other South American countries, former Soviet countries, and Europe, and that Jean-Luc Brunel's MC2 modeling agency was also supplying girls to Epstein. In July 2006, the FBI began its own investigation of Epstein, nicknamed Operation Leap Year, which resulted in a 53-page indictment in June 2007. However, Alexander Acosta, then the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of Florida, agreed to a plea deal, which Alan Dershowitz helped to negotiate, a so-called sweetheart deal to grant immunity from all federal criminal charges to Epstein, along with four named co-conspirators and any unnamed potential co-conspirators. According to the Miami Herald's Julie K. Brown, reporting on November 28, 2018, the non-prosecution agreement, quote, essentially shut down an ongoing FBI probe into whether there were more victims and other powerful people who took part in Epstein's sex crimes." End quote. At the time, this halted the investigation and sealed the indictment. Acosta later said that he offered a lenient plea deal because he was told that Epstein belonged to intelligence, was above his pay grade, and to leave it alone. Following Epstein's arrest in July 2019 on sex trafficking charges, Acosta resigned as Secretary of Labor, effective July 19, 2019. Epstein agreed to plead guilty in Florida State Court to two felony prostitution charges, register as a sex offender, and pay restitution to three dozen victims identified by the FBI. On June 30, 2008, after Epstein pleaded guilty to a state charge, one of two, 
of procuring for prostitution a girl below age 18. He was sentenced to 18 months in prison. Epstein's cell door was left unlocked. He had access to the attorney room where a television was installed for him before he was moved to the stockade's previously unstaffed infirmary. He worked at the office of a foundation he had created shortly before reporting to jail. He dissolved it after he had served his time. Epstein served almost 13 months in a private wing of the Palm Beach County Stockade before being released on July 22, 2009 for a year of probation on house arrest until August 2010. While on probation, he was allowed numerous trips on his corporate jet to his residences in Manhattan and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Though Epstein had been a Level 3 registered sex offender in New York since 2010, the New York Police Department never enforced the regulation to check in with the New York Police Department every 90 days, though noncompliance is a felony. On July 6, 2019, Epstein was arrested by the FBI NYPD Crimes Against Children Task Force at Teterboro Airport in New Jersey on sex trafficking charges. On July 8, prosecutors with the Public Corruption Unit of the Southern District of New York charged him with sex trafficking and conspiracy to traffic minors for sex. The grand jury indictment alleges that dozens of underage girls were brought into Epstein's mansions for sexual encounters. Epstein requested to be released on bond, offering to post $100 million with the condition that he would also submit to house arrest in his New York City mansion. On July 23rd, Epstein was found injured and semi-conscious at 1.30 a.m. on the floor of his cell with marks around his neck that were suspected to be the result of either a suicide attempt or an assault. His cellmate, former New York City police officer Nicholas Tartaglioni, who is charged with four counts of murder, was questioned after Epstein's condition. He denied having any knowledge of what happened. Epstein himself said he recollected nothing. Epstein believed that he was attacked by his cellmate, who was awaiting trial for four counts of murder, while the correctional staff suspected attempted suicide. On August 9, 2019, Epstein's cellmate was transferred out, but no one took his place. Later in the evening, contrary to the jail's normal procedure, Epstein was not checked every 30 minutes. The two guards who were assigned to check his jail unit that night fell asleep and did not check on him for about three hours. The guards falsified related records. Two cameras in front of Epstein's cell also malfunctioned that night. Epstein was found dead in his cell at the Metropolitan Correctional Center, MCC, in New York City at 6.30 a.m. EDT on August 10th, 2019. On November 19th, 2019, federal prosecutors in New York charged Metropolitan Correctional Center guards Michael Thomas and Tova Noel with creating false records and with conspiracy after video footage obtained by prosecutors revealed that Epstein had, against regulation, been in his cell unchecked for eight hours prior to being found dead. On August 10, 2019, the Bureau of Prisons and U.S. Attorney General William Barr called the death an apparent suicide, although no final determination had been made. On August 16, 2019, Barbara Sampson, the New York City medical examiner, ruled Epstein's death a suicide by hanging. The medical examiner, 
according to Epstein's defense counsel, only saw nine minutes of footage from one security camera to help her arrive at her conclusion. The circumstances leading up to his death are being investigated by the Justice Department.